Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Being able to use Lightroom presets is vital. If you don't create your own preset, if you don't use other people's preset, if you're not familiar with presets, you are missing out on something. I'm gonna show you an amazing workflow in this video. Please stay until the end because I'm gonna show you how to create Lightroom presets first in Lightroom Classic, then that's gonna put them into your Photoshop, and then I'm gonna show you how to get them from Lightroom Classic to Lightroom CC, and then from Lightroom CC to Lightroom Mobile. It's crazy, the same presets. This is how I've done all my books. I first started with creating an amazing black and white preset for my New York and Paris book, very much like Ansel Adams style. Then I did my Venice book in color. And when I did my Venice book, I gotta tell you the story. I was on vacations and I thought I had three months to give the photos to my publisher. I had 3000 raw files to go through. And this is really when I decided to create color preset because I would have never been able to give all the photos because sometimes you have to try like 30 different sliders on Lightroom before you can decide if your photo is gonna make it into a book or not. By using presets, you can just click one time and have a sense whether this is going into the right direction or not. I have saved hundreds of hours using presets. So I'm gonna show you how to create your own presets and how to put them everywhere. So I'm traveling through Italy and south of France. Right now I'm in a beautiful hotel in the south of France. I just came back from Imperia, Italy, uh, from Tuscany, from Venice. I'm gonna show you some of my photos I've been taking and how we can create with presets with that. The way I work is I basically take photos I really like, I start retouching them and I create preset based on this. So let me show you. So this is for example, a long exposure photo that I shot in the Roman baths in the heart of Tuscany. And um, I'm gonna retouch it. So I'm gonna open up the exposure all the way to plus 100 and bring down the highlights all the way minus 100. And then I'm gonna do my black point holding my option key and then my white point finding a white point holding the option key. Now, why do I do this on every photo? Well, I'm doing this to get back all the highlights and all the shadows. Now, I'm shooting with a Sony A7R III, one of the most incredible camera on the planet. If you are shooting with a smaller entry price DSLR, don't go plus 100 and minus 100, just go plus 50 and minus 50. Your raw file might have less than a big range than mine. That's totally okay. Okay, usually when I've done that, so now I've gotten the best out of my raw files, this is when I hunt for the white balance. I usually just play by, you know, what I like. I think it's too much blue. So I'm gonna add some yellow and some magenta. And I'm gonna add some contrast because I like it. Then I'm gonna take my gradient tool. I wanna add back maybe some blue in the sky. So I'm gonna click and drag and lower the exposure a little bit and maybe add some blue, just a tad. Then I'm gonna back it down and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make a big gradient here, but on this one, I'm not gonna add blue. I'm just gonna add some minus exposure. Okay, uh, I'm liking this. Now, one thing I do sometimes is I add a little bit of minus clarity because when you open the shadows 100%, bring down the highlights 100%, sometimes you get a bit of an HDR, illustrative look. If you wanna go natural like I'm doing now, just add a bit of minus clarity, it really helps. Okay, I really like this photo. Let me show you the before. Okay, and the after. I think on this one, you know, I would do a little more. I would take a brush and maybe, you know, add some uh, highlights here. So make sure you have a bit of exposure on your brush, you know, that uh, you have flow and density. And I'm gonna give you a whole bunch, a very special place at the end where you can see some more of this retouching. All of this for free. Okay, so, hmm, let's, let me go back to my brush. Let's brush a little more. I just wanna make this maybe a little bit brighter. And whenever you do brushes, you're anyway not gonna save them in your presets. So uh, brushes is really tailor-made per photo. All I'm trying to do is make some of the parts a little bit brighter. Sometimes I like to add a bit of clarity. That's way too much. So I'm just gonna back it down, but voila. Voila. I'm also gonna uh, crop this photo. I'm gonna go 16 by nine because that's what I work with my galleries. Uh, they love 16 by nine. And I think I can get a little closer on the subject too. Okay, so I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm ready to create a preset. So I'm gonna go here, create preset, and, and I'm gonna first create a group of preset that I'm gonna call, guess what? The Serge Remily preset. I spent hours finding that title. Not kidding. Okay. Now, uh, this one I'm gonna call Lone Exposure because it was a Lone Exposure photo. Lone Exposure one. Uh, make sure that, well, crop is not active. 
I'm not going to take the transform. Transform, I always take it out because transform options are very tailor-made to a photo. You don't want to use them in your preset. But everything else is kind of cool. Make sure that uh, auto setting is not on. I like to have my settings on and then just adjust them to uh, my new photo. So I'm going to create this and I'm going to take this photo that I shot a couple of days after in the heart of Tuscany, very famous church close to San Quirico d'Orsia, beautiful city. So now I'm going to go and click my long exposure preset and check this out. It's looking already really good, but we need to do some more. So I'm going to click, check my black point, which I do on every time I use a preset, check my white point. Okay, maybe on this one, I want to add a little tiny more magenta. And then on this one, I'm going to crop it a lot because I don't like the trees up there. So I'm going to go to my classic 16 by 9 and I'm going to crop. I really want to get on that church uh, and make it more panoramic. I'm going to go to the limit of this tree there. And voila, I'm going to take my gradients, which is now all the way up there and bring it down because I do want to still get a bit of a vignette effect. And I'm going to, on this one, I'm going to add a, a circle. I want to add a little circle there with just a little bit of exposure. Make sure your circle is inverted and the feather is all the way. All that does, you know, it's like having a lamp here. So maybe just add a little bit of uh, interest in, in the sky here. Okay, I really like that. I think I want to add a little bit of vignetting effect on this one just because I can. And, you know, I also want to vary. Well, that's a little too much. I love vignetting effect. Okay, I think it's a little too dark now. So I'm going to go back up and add a bit of exposure. Okay, I like that. So I'm ready to create my second preset. And this one I'm going to create, sorry, I'm going to create preset. I'm already in the search remedy preset group. So all I have to do is call it Lone Exposure 2. The return of the Lone Exposure. Okay, I'm happy with that. And you just go on and on and on and on and on. Now the cool thing about this is check this out. This is a photo that I shot. It's another long exposure I shot in Menton, very close to where I am now. I can right click, edit, open a smart object in Photoshop. The reason I'm opening a smart object in Photoshop is I want to show you Camera Raw. Yes, because once you created something in Lightroom Classic, automatically it's going to be available in Camera Raw. So that's two birds with one stone. So I double click on it so I can go to Camera Raw and check this out. Now if I go to this Second before last tab, here is my surgery and preset with non exposure one and non exposure two. So that's crazy. Two burns in one stone. Now, guys, I just have a, a favor to ask you. If you can just take a second and like this video, it makes a whole difference. If you like this video, it helps me and I can do all these free videos for you. So please take a second and like this video. Also, Leave me a comment and tell me what you think about this video, what you would like to learn. I read every single comment. I would love to hear your viewpoint. And of course, if you're not subscribed, take a second and subscribe to this channel. All right, so after traveling through the amazing Tuscany, and by the way, if you've never been to Tuscany, it's one of the nicest places on the planet. I mean, San Quirico d'Orsia is the heart of Tuscany and it's the heart, it's the paradise of photographer. I don't think there was a place where I met most photographer than in San Quirico d'Orsia. It's crazy because it's, it's iconic. If you can get a chance to go there, go there. Of course, go to Venice and go to Florence and go to the south of France. Anyways, so now I want to get this preset and stay until the end. Don't stop watching the video now. Stay until the end because I'm going to show you how to use them on your mobile. So now I've created this preset. How do we get them into Lightroom CC? Because if we can get them into Lightroom CC, they will automatically be on your mobile. Well, pretty straightforward. You go to Lightroom, Preference, you go to the second time called Preset, you click here on Show Lightroom Develop Preset, and here, check this out, you have a folder called Search Remedy Preset with Lone Exposure 1 and 2. So I'm going to copy them over to my desktop. Okay, here they are, and you see it's XMP files, and now I can go to my Lightroom CC, and I can take this file, for example, from beautiful Venice, and I can go and Import profile and preset here. I'm on my search remedy preset. I select both of them and click on import. And you see it created a folder called search remedy preset. And here they are, loan exposure one and loan exposure two. I can take loan exposure one and I can, you know, adapt it. And what's crazy is I, I can keep on doing that. Um, so on this one, I think I'm just going to maybe add a bit of a 
the, the circle which is here. I want to put it really here. Okay, and uh, let's see, my black point is a little too strong. So I'm gonna back it down, my white point is good. Okay, check my gradient. And you see, everything we did in Lightroom Classic is here now, which is crazy. I'm gonna back this down. Okay, and I think the white balance is way too blue on this one. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow, a bit more magenta. Ooh, and voila. And you know what? I could go here to preset. I could click here and create preset, go in the same folder, and I'm calling this one sunset, for example, or blue hour. This is like more blue hour preset. Okay, make sure that tools is on because tools is gonna to be the linear gradient and the radial gradient and click save. And now it's magic because it's on Lightroom CC, so automatically it goes to my phone. Let's jump over to my phone and show you. All right, so here I am, I click on Lightroom CC. This is a photo from Paris that I shot a while ago and I can go here to the preset, these two circles is the preset. And check this out, search my preset, blue hour, long exposure one, long exposure two, I can take blue hour as a starting point, of course. I have to go, you know, and do all the similar things. So I can go to light, I can do my white point, I can do my black point, I can boost the exposure, bring down the highlights, and uh, before, after, before, after. And voila, so the fact that you put it on Lightroom CC has put it over to my phone, it's really cool. And now I have them everywhere. Try this at home, you will love it. Now I prepared a special playlist for you about preset. If you love preset, check it out. There's a lot of free presets for you in there. Just click here.